Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tim Gaither Podcast, Wrestling Wednesday. My guest today is Matt and Franca. Matt and Franca is a four-time Missouri State champion. He wrestled for Nebraska, and I think he wrestled for Missouri as well. Total stud. He's a co-owner of Battle Gear, which is the hat I'm wearing, and I can't wait to talk to him, so let's bring him in. Like I said, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I've known who you were for uh, the longest time. I think the first time I saw you wrestle, I was in like seventh grade, and when did you graduate high school? Um, 94. 94, okay. So, same, we're the same age. I graduated in 94, too. But I was, uh, I think it was at, like, the Topeka Invitational. And you were in, like, 7th grade, because I was in 7th grade. And you were wrestling a guy named Scott Tremblay, which I don't know if you remember that or not. But... Tremblay. Okay. Well, he was, he was really good. He ended up, uh, he was always good, even in kids, but he ended up being a two-time high school state champ and was a four-time NAL All-American and uh, was a total stud in his own right, even back then. So I sat down to watch Tremblay wrestle this guy from Missouri that I didn't know at the time, and you just beat the shit out of him. Like, <laughs> like I mean, mauled him. Like, I was just, like, sitting there just on the side of the mat, just like, who is this dude, you know? Like, you had this long hair, and you were just this little fucking tank. <laughs> and uh, did you, you had long hair, right? Yeah, I think I did. I, I, you know, I, I hung out with Brett Williams a lot, you know, and uh, I think that we, I think we all had long hair back then in the back. So. Yeah, yeah. So you had this cool hair, and you had like cool shoes, and you just beat the crap out of Tremblay. So you know, back then you couldn't really follow people. So then when you got when you got into high school, I, I started following your career, and you know, you won four state titles. And back then, it wasn't near as common. To win four state titles like it seems like now it happens all the time and back then the really good guys would win three you know like brett and ricky and eric aiken and timor terry i can name a, a dozen guys who won three but naming four is uh pretty rare so uh so it, it, i was like this fan of yours without even knowing you so that that's what i love about tech technology and all this is that i can sit here and, and talk to you and how do you say your last name is it in franca or in franca in Franca, yeah. Okay. In Franca. Yeah. And I it's a, about anything, though, man. <laughs> and it's a cool name and everything. It was just like Matt and Franca. He's this freaking beast. And, and in my eyes, you were like this, after I saw what you did to Trembley, and I've never seen you wrestle since, but you were like this unbeatable, you know, I was like, who who can beat that guy? Um, mm-hmm. And then when I saw you lost, like, how many times did you lose in high school? Maybe three, four? I, I think I lost four total, but uh, it's funny, too, I'm wearing Brett Williams. So I think I think we were like two and two against each other or something, you know. So two were, two was the Brett Williams, and then a couple were uh, some other guys that I went up to wrestle, and um, you know I didn't do as well as I, I thought I would, but I, I was always trying to chase the the best guys, you know. So yeah, uh, but yeah, me and me and Brett went back and forth quite a bit, and uh, our coaches liked to put us against each other, you know. So they knew we were good buddies, and and they just somehow made made sure that. Whenever we wrestled, uh, Oak Park and Oak Grove wrestled, we, we were matched up against each other. So yeah, I think they enjoyed that. Well, backtracking a little bit, how did you get into wrestling, and were you good right from the start? Um, so I got in it man, when I was about, I think, eight years old, maybe, my first year. Um, you know, living in Oak Grove, wrestling was kind of it. You know, that's, that's what you did. Um, I think Glasgow started coaching there in, like, 83, 84. Um, and, and the program was already good, but he just took it to that next level, you know? So what I, what I did, I, I was with uh, buddies with the Fry family, uh, Sean and Ryan and Brett. Okay. Um, Ryan was my age. Um, I was always over their house every weekend, and they had mats in their basement, of course, you know? So, man, we just wrestled all the time. And uh, when I was over there and, and uh, you know, they kind of said some of my parents, uh, their parents said about, hey, man, you need to get him in wrestling. And I think my parents held off for a year or two, um, not really understanding what it was. Um, and then they decided to give me the green light, and it kind of took off from there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, my, I had success early on, you know, but I, I got beat by some guys and um, got a little frustrated, but it kind of drove me, you know. Yeah. Did you do any other sports, or was wrestling always it? Um, at that age, I was playing football and baseball, and um, I played football all the way up through my junior year. Um, I didn't play my senior year because I was kind of going on some recruiting trips, and I kind of knew what my path was at that point. Um, I kind of quit baseball 
man, probably when I was fifth or sixth grade to, to wrestle in the summertime. You know, you couldn't really do both back then. Yeah. Um, so I, I focused on getting on those national teams and wrestling at the, the Southern Plains Regionals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how many state titles did you win before high school? Man, I think I was that guy that won it like every other year. You know, I'd get beat in my down year and then win it when I was older. You know, uh, one year I think uh, I lost to Micah Gardner my seventh grade year, and that was kind of a big a big match. Uh, I don't know what the score was, but, you know, I, I don't think he ever lost a kid's state title. But, uh, it, you know, I wanted to beat him, and, and I thought I could, and I, I think he ended up beating me. Um, and then I lost to a couple other, you know, hammers that were, you know, ended up in high school. They all were state champions. So it was just kind of one of those deals that, you know, I was in some good weight brackets, and, you know, I always want to wrestle with best kids, and sometimes worked out, and sometimes didn't. Yeah, even the years that you didn't win it, did you get second? I, yeah, I think I was second most of the time. You know, I know I lost to Mike in the finals, and, and I lost a pretty tough kid out of St. Louis one year in the finals. Um, I think I lost to well, the kid that I beat my freshman year at State. I think I lost to him maybe one year in the finals as well. So okay, yeah, it's funny that you bring up Micah Gardner because my my son's name is Micah. And when I, when I was a kid, um, you know, like you said, Micah Gardner was one of those guys that you're just like, you know, he was a freaking beast. He won state like every year. And I was one of my best friends, almost like your relationship with, with, uh, Brett, even though we didn't wrestle in high school, we were super tight all the way through school when we were younger and we would sit on the phone for hours just, and he, he was an encyclopedia. He knew who beat who by what score and all that. And whenever he brought up Micah Gardner, he was one of those guys that he was like, he, Derek was really good, but Micah was one of the few people that he never beat. And one time, I just remember all these stories. He was like, one time I got up on him by five points. I was beating him five to nothing, and then he got pissed off and beat me seventeen to five. And and <laughs> so I always remembered that name, and I liked how it looked on a bracket. And he beat me a couple times, and you know, like I probably could have done better against him, but my in in my mind, I was like, this is Micah Gardner. I'm, I'm not going to beat him. So. When we went to name my name our kid or trying to pick a name, you know, we went skiing one day and the kid getting our skis, his name was Micah, and I was like, I've always loved that name. And so he's not named after Micah Gardner, but he's the one that planted the seed. Um, you know, that, that was a cool name and everything like that. Um oh, yeah. so you said you went to Oak Grove? I did. That's where I graduated from, yeah. Okay. And how many team titles did you guys didn't you guys win team titles almost every year? We, we did. So when I was there, we won three out of four. So my freshman year, we didn't win it, and then we won it the next three years. And then I believe Oak Grove might have won it two or three years after that in a row. So they kind of had a, a good role there in the mid-'90s, you know, all the way till the end. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how many Coach Glasgow won while he was at Oak Grove, but, I mean, you know, he, it, it was crazy. I mean, we had, you know, two, three, four-time state champions in the room all the, you know, that we were working out with that. I guess not four time, um, you know, but we had we had plenty of three timers and two timers of our workout partners, and you know, I, even today I say that our room was probably tougher than most of the competition we were in, you know, and it really prepared us to have success when we got into those tournaments and, and the duels and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And we also chased the big team. We're we're the small class school, um, but most of our competition, our tournaments, you know, we wrestled the class three and four schools. You know, we were chasing the best best teams in the state. Um, so that, that also prepared us for making a run at another state title. Yeah. Um, what other studs were on your team that I would recognize? Was was Derek Bland on your team? No, he was no park kid. Okay. He was no park, but he was our age. He was ninety four. Yeah. Um, Brett Fry. He was he was on there. I don't know if you remember Brett Fry. He was a year younger than me. He ended up winning it uh, four times. Um, Vince Leonard was on. He was one of my teammates. He was a couple years older than me. He, he wrestled Missouri Valley. He moved in from Oklahoma. He was tough. He was a two timer. Uh, Tim Finley uh, was a year older than me. Uh, I think he was a two timer. Uh, Brandon Reinbolt was on our team. He was our heavyweight. He won it two or three times. Okay. Uh, you know, list goes on and on. And uh, it, it was it was kind of fun. You know, you had you had a guy that might get hurt or or whatever, and just kind of like next man up. And that guy that filled in was was right there. You know, it just. You know, I think that competition, you just and that success, you just kind of bred that in the room. Yeah, you don't happen to have that uh, that match with you and uh, Micah Gardner in the state finals, like on tape somewhere, do you? I might, man. I don't have to look. Yeah, um, I have a couple of me and Brett Williams. I know. Um, yeah, one at Southern Plains, and then I think a couple in high school for sure. Um, I'll have to check and see. I'm, I'm sure I do somewhere to my parents' video. You know, most of most of my uh, matches, so I imagine I have it somewhere. Yeah. How would you describe your style? What's that? 
I said, I'll have to look it up and find it. I'll send it to you. Okay. How, how would you describe your style? Because like I said, I only saw you that once, but it seemed like you were really strong. Like everything Tremblay tried to do to you, you were just like, yeah, no. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I was um, always stronger than everybody, you know, you know, looking back at, I don't know if it was stronger, more positioning, you know. Um, I think when I went out there, I just want to beat guys up, you know. It was kind of that we grew up watching the, the Terry Brands films, Tom Brands films, you know. And, yeah. Uh, Try to get, get that stuff off that Iowa TV, you know, on the VHS. We just sit around and watch that stuff. And I think that's kind of the style that, that Coach Glasgow taught us, too. You know, it was always, you know, snapping and pulling and pushing, and, you know. Yeah. Kind of just almost intimidating, but not crossing that line to where, you know, you're illegal, but, you know, get to that line. You know, make people want to quit. And, and that's kind of was always my mindset. Is, hey, man, let's make this guy, guy want to quit, you know? Yeah. So, and I love it when, you know, guys thought they could beat me, you know? That's whenever I was like, all right, let's go, you know? Yeah. So that was that was kind of, that was a fun part of wrestling for me. Yeah, it's funny that, you know, the, when you talk about it, it makes me remember, like, yeah, that's what you were doing to Trimble. Like, you were letting him up and doing stuff that college guys were doing, like just pushing him all over the mat and just... You know, most kids at that age would just, you know, keep riding somebody or whatever, but you kept letting him up and taking him down, and I was just, I was just in awe. I was just like, who the hell is this kid? <laughs> yeah, we were just, from an early early age, man, our mindset was just score points, you know? Yeah. Just continue to score points, not not try to win three to two or, or five to three, you know, and score as many points you can and make somebody quit. And, and I, I got it at Oak Grove, you know, from Coach Glasgow in the room, then we'd always have college guys come back and wrestle with us, and... Um, so, you know, you continue to, to get that mentality. And then, you know, being around Brett Williams and, and Micah and Ricky and, and all them guys up north, um, you know, we just all, we all kind of had that mindset, you know. And it, yeah. It's like, all right, how many points can you score? You know, let me see what I can do, you know. And we just kind of fed off each other. Yeah. Um, so you and Brett were tight, and you wrestled a few times in high school. Did you ever have to wrestle at state, or were we in the same? No, we were in different classes at state. Uh, okay. We wrestled uh, – two tournaments maybe and then a couple duels so um when i was in high school park and oak grove dueled every year uh, i was kind of first duel of the year um they were they were pretty good back then and, and we were pretty good so it's kind of a you know big class small class type of duels it's fun for everybody to watch and um you know kind of kicked our season off and then uh, we'd see him i think I, we'd see him at a christmas tournament right before christmas and then maybe one after christmas um at north Kansas city but um i think we wrestled our first two years and they were kind of different weight classes in our last two years. Okay. So, so when you guys you guys were good friends then, uh, was it weird, like, leading up to the matches? Did you talk or? You know, um, you know, you didn't have cell phone. You didn't have text or anything like that. You didn't have social media. So, you know, I don't think we really talked as much, you know, during during the high school season, probably when we were wrestling and competing against each other. But, you know, afterwards, it, it was what it was, you know. We were buddies again and, um you leave, you leave it on the mat, right? That's what they say. And, that, and I think that's truly what we did. We went out and competed against each other, and uh, we respected each other. And, um, you know, that, that were probably boring matches because we knew each other so well. Um, the scoring was low, and, you know, he wasn't going to give an inch. I wasn't going to give an inch. And, um, you know, they were probably two-to-one matches, three-to-two matches. And, um, you know, the thing about Brad is I just remember he was so fast off bottom that he would explode off the mat, and I'm chasing him, trying to keep him down. And we go out of bounds, so I look up at the clock, and it's like one second ticked on. I'm like, Jesus, how many times do I have to do this, you know? And uh, that, that was one thing I remember about wrestling Brett is he's just so explosive. And, and you know, we, we were so similar with our styles, you know, that it, it, it was fun. It was fun. It, you know, we had some great workouts and then throw Ricky in there. And, um, you know, but our matches probably to everybody else was boring. I know that um, my high school coach, Coach Glasgow, and, and Gary Mab, that they, they definitely thought it was boring. And, <laughs> you know, I guess you want to see your, be you know, your better two guys compete against each other, you know, and, and try to win the duels. So that's that's what they did. Yeah. Do you remember who won those duels? You know, I don't. I don't know. Man, I think we did. But I don't know. You know, we might have split with them. I'll have to look that up, too. Yeah. Um, but I, I know they're probably really close one way or the other. But I, I think we at least won one of them. You know, I don't know about, but I think we blew them all four years in high school. I know you. Uh, I know you work with Ricky. Do you still hang out with uh, Brett and talk to him a lot? I do when I see him. You know, he's he's super busy and um, and he's got a lot going on. But yeah, I, I ran up to Excelsior Springs and, and I saw him the day he moved up that way. 
Um, I don't see him as much as I'd like to, you know, just he's got a family and, and mine and we're just, you know, everybody goes a different direction, but yeah, you know, we get together and it's just like we haven't skipped a beat. So, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the best kind of friends and I, I don't get to see enough of those guys anymore. Um, yeah. did you walk through your high school state tournaments or did you have competition? Um, I had, I had a couple, maybe close matches, you know, um, Again, I think my, my toughest competition was probably in our in our high school wrestling room, you know, um, and then also in the spring and summer. Um, you know, before I went into to my high school year, uh, my freshman year, I wrestled in uh, Cadet Nationals, and uh, and it was in Michigan. And I think, you know, I, I had a successful summer that year. So, so going into the high school state tournament, it, you know, to me, it was just another tournament, you know. Like, I expected to win it. I wanted to win four times. That was my goal. And, I kind of went in with that attitude, and, and I was fortunate that I, you know, had four good matches, you know. Yeah. And, and they all went the way I wanted to, but I definitely had some tough kids, you know. Um, I think the kid I wrestled in the finals, I had a, you know, nine to three match early in the year with, but but he was one of those guys that beat me all through little league, you know. So yeah, just kind of I turned a corner, and um, you know, something clicked. Yeah. You know, if my son wants to wrestle, that's one of the things I'm going to teach him is that, you know, if you get to like the state tournament, that it's just another tournament and try not to make it a, make it too big of a deal. Because the first few years I was wrestling, like I could be undefeated and go into state and get beat out because I just thought it. I thought I had to do something different. And it wasn't until a few years into my career that I was like, it's just a tournament. Just do what you've done all year long, you know, and it's easy to say that, but it's another thing to finally, you know, know it and realize it and, uh. So you wrestled a lot of freestyle? I did. Um, when I quit baseball, you know, like my sixth grade year, I just kind of focused in on, on freestyle in the spring and summer. Well, really, Greco had freestyle. I, I love Greco. But, um, yes, yeah, so I, I wrestled in the spring and summer. And, and I think, you know, at that time especially, it really gave me a leg up um, on, on the kids I wrestled in, in the state tournament in high school, you know. Um, a lot of those kids really weren't doing what we were doing back then. Um, especially at our class and class, I think we were one and two back then. Um, you know, we had we had six or seven kids from Oak Grove that, that wrestled a lot in the spring and summer, and I, I really think it just you know gave it gave us that edge on kids going into the state tournament and stuff. Yeah, um, but yeah, I loved it, man. I I love freestyle, I love Greco. Um, you know, I love I love traveling around and, and wrestling those big events and you know trying to trying to chase the best. Yeah, one of my biggest regrets is not wrestling Greco. I I was good upper body and I I I, I didn't I didn't have great leg attacks and I, I really just wish I would have tried it. But without getting into my story, I never did it. And uh, uh, why did you end up choosing? Oh, first of all, I wanted to ask how you did it, Junior Nationals. So I had I was really successful at Cadet Nationals. Um, I was in the finals twice. You know, All American every year at Cadets. Um, went up to juniors. Um, you know, that's whenever cadets and junior were separate tournaments. So uh, you'd wrestle cadets first, and then if you were eligible to, to go wrestle juniors, all your tough cadet kids would, would end up at junior national, man. And the brackets were huge, and the competition was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so my first year, I think it was down in Warrensburg. Um, I just won a cadet national title a week earlier, two weeks earlier. I bumped up to, to weight class and wrestled. I think I just wrestled Greco my first year because I was tired. Um, and I think I was in the bubble match. And I think I lost on leg foul. And actually, I, I think Rick, Rick or Coach Mav, they're both coaching me. Um, but I kind of felt like I got, um, you know, I, I thought it was a little bit of a bad call, but it was what it was. So, so I went out on the bubble. Um, and then uh, the next year, I think my sophomore year, um, I was up in Minnesota, trying to get down to 114, and I always tried to get down, they always tried to get me down to 114. I never wanted to get down to 114. They always tried to get me down to 114 for junior national. So I was up in uh, Minnesota, having trouble making weight. I didn't make it, and uh, Coach Glasgow, my high school coach, said, you know what, man, I'm done with you. You're not going to bump up. So uh, he didn't let me bump up to 123, and uh, I think I ended up wrestling 123 in freestyle and went out on the bubble again. But in Greco, Dwight Henson won it that year. Okay. And I think I beat him one or two times um, in the spring and early summer in Greco. And I'm like, man. So I felt like if I was in that bracket, you know, I would have been right there, you know, but I, I didn't get that opportunity. Um, and, it, and it, you know, probably was the right call on Coach Glasgow, you know. Um, he always held us accountable, and it, it probably made us better people in the end, you know. But yeah. uh, for me, I was like, man, just give me that opportunity. Let me bump up and wrestle because – I felt like I could wrestle it that way. 
Uh, so again, I, I wrestled freestyle and I went out on the bubble. I uh, came back the next year, um, and that's when I actually moved to Fargo. It was my junior year. Uh, that's when they did not do, I think they did blind draws back then still. So I opened up Greco, first match I get Danny Felix, you know, and I don't think we had wrestled before. And he wasn't great Greco, but, but he had a pretty good position. I think it was a one-point match. He beat me, uh, came all the way back to the bubble, lost on the bubble again. And then <laughs> uh, entered freestyle, and I don't know who I lost to early on. But I think I came back and, and lost. I know, I know I lost on the bubble again. I think it was the Sean Contos. So, you know, I yeah. went out on just some pretty tough dudes, but uh, I just could never get over the bubble match in, uh, in juniors. And then uh, my senior year, I forego that. I didn't wrestle um, because I went up to Nebraska that summer and, and started getting ready for college. So I kind of regret not wrestling my senior year. Um, you know, I thought I would have had a good opportunity. But, I, that's you know, I kind of always – I think about that all the time, but, you know, but, I wish I would have had a better junior run that, you know, like I did cadets, but it just didn't work out. Yeah. So Glasgow was pretty mad at you when you didn't, uh, when you couldn't make 14? He was. He was. Um, I can't remember who he, uh, he had me work out with, with one of the senior level guys at the time that was training. He just beat the crap out of me <laughs> on the center mat in Minnesota for like two hours, you know, and he's like, you don't want to make weight? Fine. Go work out with, I can't remember who it was. And I'm like, rip the man, you know, that, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. So I'm up there and I just took an ass open for like two hours, you know, in front of everybody. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. But yeah, that's, that, that's our relationship, mine and Coach Glasses, you know, that's the stuff that he would do to me and, and, you know, just trying to teach the lessons, and, you know, it's bigger than what that day is or, or that tournament, man. It's being accountable and, and getting the job to them, you know, and I think that's what, that's what made our team so successful, and it probably made me successful down the road. Yeah. What uh, What led you to Nebraska? Is that the only place you uh, – did you consider going anywhere else? Uh, yeah, man. I, I had um, a lot of opportunities. I was very fortunate. Um, I went on uh, four or five recruiting trips. Um, a couple of them I, I wish I – you know, I wish I would have went on some others, but um, I didn't. Um, you know, I, I went out to Clemson. I really like Clemson. Um I really like Clemson, but it, it was a long ways away. Um, and, you know, of course, then they ended up dropping the program. But so I, it, was, it was kind of funny on my recruiting trips. About three out of the four places I went, um, you know, of course, I'm from Missouri, and, and Sandy Henson was doing his thing in college. I think he just came off the second national title. So everywhere I went, I'm like, hey, who am I going to work out with? Or who's your assistant coach? I'm like, Sandy Henson. I'm like, okay. So I get back from Clemson, I'm fired up about it, and I go to Oklahoma, and I'm like, you know, who, who's a, who's going to be your guy for me to work out with? Who's your assistant coach? I'm like, hey, we're bringing in Sammy Henson. I'm like, how are you bringing him in if he's going to be out there? <laughs> you know, and then I'm down in Mizzou, and I think Mizzou said, hey, yeah, we're going to bring in Sammy Henson. I'm like, this guy's going to be everywhere, you know? <laughs> uh, so, um, but now I loved, I've loved Oklahoma. You know, I think Mark Manning was down there. It was the first year with uh, Coach Spades, um, and, and that was – Looking back, that probably would have been a better fit for me. Um, I went out to Michigan State. I liked it a lot. Um, and I ended up in Nebraska because a lot of the guys that I grew up wrestling with in the spring and summer were up there. Uh, Timor Terry was up there. Um, Jeremy Welder, who I'd wrestled in the National Finals of Greco, he was up there. And, and I just had a comfort level up there. Um, Brad Penrith was the assistant coach, and um, Tim Newman was the head coach. And they really just kind of sold me on the program. Um, it, was, it was close to home, you know. Um, and, and when you get up to Nebraska and you're in the, um, you know, the athletic facilities, you're, you're kind of overwhelmed, you know, it's just, it's pretty cool. So that's where I ended up, um, you know, and, and looking back, it, it probably wasn't the best fit for me, but you know, at 18 years old, you're, you know, you kind of do what you do, right? Yeah. So what, why do you say it wasn't the best fit for you? Like, I just don't think the style was right for me. Um, the environment, you know, I, I don't know. I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe the coaches weren't, weren't the right fit for me, you know, once I got up there. Um, I just, I, I feel like I could have had success maybe somewhere else. Um, I I felt like I was a little too big for 118, you know, but at that time I was probably a, a tweener. I was, I was probably between 18 and 26, you know, not quite big enough for 26 at the time, but, you know, I bumped up and wrestled a little bit and had some success. Um, 25 probably would have been a perfect weight class for me, you know, just 
that 18 was a hard pull for me. And, and, I, and I probably didn't do it the right way, you know. Um, so, I don't know. You know, it, it, they gave me every opportunity to be, to be successful, and I just didn't take advantage of it. You know, I, I, my freshman year, I was up there, and I, I was doing well, and uh, I was getting down to some weight. Uh, but, you know, back then we didn't have as many opens as we do today. So I think you only made weight a couple times. So for me to pull down and not keep my weight down like I was used to in high school, it was very hard. Yeah. And I remember going into to Coach Newman. I said, hey, man, I, you know, I, want, I want to wrestle this year. I need to wrestle. I need to make weight. And he's like, you know, if, if I don't feel like we can win the national title, I'm not going to I'm not gonna put you in the lineup. I'm going to redshirt you. And I'm like, all right, man. So I think the combination of, you know, not being the guy, you know, for a year and having to sit and wait your turn just kind of took a toll on me and, and with my weight, not making weight all the time, you know, if, when you're doing that and competing all the time, you know, for 10, 12 years, and then you go in there and, and you got to sit a little bit, it's hard to do. And, yeah. I, and for me, I probably wasn't mature enough to do it, you know. Um, so my weight got a little high and then coming back that second year, um, I just wasn't as focused, you know. And so I can't really blame it on Nebraska. They gave me every opportunity. I just Sometimes when I look back, I'm like, you know, maybe if I was in a different situation, it might have worked out better, you know. But yeah. Who knows? Maybe it wouldn't. Have. Things happen for a reason. Yeah, they sure do. And so, you know, it's it's just it's just a fact of life. You know, when you're when you're younger, you you're you're kind of dumb about certain things, and then you get older and you figure shit out, and then your body goes to hell, and you're like, <laughs> shit. Right. right. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, you know, but I, I, me and Timo were good buddies up there, and and uh, you, you know, I had a lot of good friends up there, and um, you know. I met my wife up there, so, you know, it wasn't all bad. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, things work out for a reason. Uh, how much weight were you c- cutting to try to get to 118? <laughs> so, oh, sorry about that. All right. um, I remember going in, coming back from Christmas, and, you know, back, I think we had a couple days, went home for Christmas, came back. I remember stepping on the scale, and it said 148. Oh, and I'm shit. Like, what in the world? <laughs> you know, and I think all the guys were like, what the hell happened, you know? And, uh, for me, I just kind of, if I would ever lift weights or, or not really, I would just kind of get bigger, you know? And it, so a lot of times up there, I couldn't lift weights a lot. They didn't want me lifting weights. And, and you know, my, my whole time up there, I was focused on getting down to weight. So I can never really get bigger and stronger. Um, I can never really focus on technique. It was always, you know, getting down to weight. Um, I would step on the scale and make weight. And then I'd go to the training room and get an IV stuck in my arm, you know, to, to hydrate. And it just, it wasn't a very <laughs> fun experience, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I, I would get up to to 148, 145. Man, know? so it sucked. Yeah, you know? then, back then it was twenty four hour weigh-ins. You yeah, know? so you wait in twenty four hours before your duel, and then you know you could hydrate back up. You know, it was a thought process. So it's like so it's okay, pull ten pounds, you know, pull twelve pounds, and and guys could do it. I just wasn't as good at it at that time as what those guys <laughs> as those guys were. You know? Yeah. Oh, man. But that is a lot of freaking weight, dude. And back then, you know, I'm glad that the sport has kind of gotten away from it because, you know, and now they have the two-hour weigh-ins or whatever. I think it was when I was in college that, like, two kids died within, like, a week. I yeah. forget what school they were at, but um, so they, they changed all those rules. And now the 125, like you were saying, is kind of the 118 of back then as far as, like, right. it's almost like 18-pounders back then were bigger than today's 25-pounders. At least they seem like that to me. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's uh, so again going back to the Sammy Henson reference, right? The, everybody compared me. Well, Sammy Henson can make it. You can make it. You know, Eric Aiken can make it. You can make it. I'm like, I don't know what they're doing to make it, man. But I can't really make it all the time. Yeah. You know? So even at 14 and a half, I see them guys have made. You know, they wrestled 114 and a half on the senior level. I'm like, how in the hell did they make weight? You yeah. Know? It's crazy, but um, yeah, it, it was tough, man. I remember. You know, leaving my windows open, wide open in Nebraska in the middle of wintertime because I, my body just couldn't cool down. I just couldn't get comfortable. And, you know, it, it was it was tough, you know. Just, like I said, I, I, I couldn't really focus on training. It was, it was always beating the scale, you know. And yeah. And that really, I think, had an impact on me mentally while I was up there. Yeah. How long did you end up uh, staying at Nebraska? So I think there were two years. Um, my second year, I, I was um, – Jeremy Wilder got hurt, and I was wrestling at 126. Um, having some success up there, he came back. I think he ended up wrestling at the Big 12s that year. Maybe, I think it was the Big 12s. Um, he ended up wrestling there after he came back from injury. I wanted to stay up, you know, that way. Um, and it just kind of conflict of interest, and I just I, I felt like it was probably best that I leave. And I had some other things happening in my personal life at that time. Um, I, I just thought it was probably better if I tried to find a different 
different home. Yeah. But again, looking back on it, um, I probably should have stayed up there, sucked it up, and you know went with them during the summertime to camps and uh, continued to get better. And, and I probably could have moved up eventually, you know. But but back then, I just it was a different mindset too with the coaches. They recruited you for a weight, and they really didn't. They didn't want to see you move up because that's where their money was tied into. You know, they had their money tied up at one eighteen, and that's that's where they wanted you to be at. Yeah. Um, so. What going back to the weight cut? What kind of stuff did you do to pull all that weight? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, we rode bikes and saunas with saunas with the plastics on. You know. Yeah. So uh, it was a lot of bike riding, jump roping, stuff like that. You know. Um, just, just, you know, do what you got to do to get down the weight. Yeah. You know? Um, there, there was guys on the team that they knew how many pounds they could lose every 10 minutes, you know, and, uh, they had their body down to science and, you know, I, I wasn't there yet. And I, you know, just, I think I just fought it so much, you know, because I'm like, I just don't want to do this, man. Let me go up or, you know, let me lift and get stronger. And, you know, I yeah. think I can go up and compete. And, and you know, I did, I, I talked to Tim Newman, um, kind of through Facebook, Maybe about a year ago, and he, he's like, "Man, if I would have known, he goes, I would have had you, you know, I would have had you go up to twenty six or thirty four. He's like, you could wrestle up one or two ways, you know. He's, he's like, I just didn't know back then, you know. Yeah. He's like I didn't know, I didn't know your capability of, of being able to do that. Basically, what he was saying, you know. He's like, he just thought that's where I needed to be, you know, at one eighteen. So. What about the nutrition part of it? Like, were you did you just starve yourself, or did you eat it all? Yeah, I was eating a little bit, you know, but you didn't eat much. You know, was, again, nobody really taught me how to cut weight very good. Um, so, you know, you're kind of on your own and doing it, you know. And yeah. You just kind of stole what other guys were doing. And um, sometimes you were smart enough to learn from the guys that did the right way. And and sometimes you weren't, you know. And I, and I, I probably wasn't the smart one that learned how to do it from guys that were doing it the right way, you know. We, get, we had another kid up there, Brad Canoy, who cut to 118. I think he was a couple times on American at 18. And, you know, he did it the right way. He'd probably start early fall and, and watch what he ate and ran all the time. You know, do that. And, and um, I wasn't that guy. I liked to do it my do it my own way. You know, sweat it off and, and torture myself. And, yeah. Um, you know, just it didn't it didn't work for me that way. So. Yeah, well, I was telling somebody. I probably could have got to the weight too. But, you know, if if I would have maintained it properly, and I just again, I, I, I probably wasn't mature enough or in the right mindset to really do it. But it it, it was a big pull for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was telling somebody the other day, my sophomore year of high school, we had a coach that was, was, uh, a no excuses kind of guy. And I told him I was going to go 135 and, and I, you know, I, I should have went 140, but I, he was one of those people that was like, you said you're going 135. That's what you're going. And like the last week of that, like for five days, I think I had like four bowls of cereal and like five glasses of water. Like for dinner, I would have a glass of water. And I got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I ended up quitting that year because I couldn't, I just couldn't make the weight and he was not very forgiving about certain things. And then the guy that ended up winning what stayed at 140 that year was a guy that I used to beat the crap out of all the time. And I was like, damn it. Um, but you know, as a 15 year old, I didn't have the, I didn't have the maturity to just go to the guy and be like, Hey man, I'm trying to do this, but it's killing me. Um, so anyway, I want and I, and I, looking back, man, like, so my, my, between my eighth and ninth grade year, I think I wrestled a cadet national at 112 pounds. Mm-hmm. You know, so when I was 14 years old, I was at 112, and I was cutting to get to 112. Yeah. And then when I'm 19 and 20 years old, they want me to, to get down to 118. It's like, so six pounds in that amount of time. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's when your body's maturing and getting stronger. And, you know, so again, I, I'm not blaming it on anybody. I, I probably could have done it differently, but. But I was always pulling a lot of weight, and I think at that time I was just like, you know what, man, I'm tired of it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's it's probably ruined a lot of careers, weight cutting. And yeah. I, uh, I, I remember um, uh, I was supposed to be tall. You know, like in seventh grade, I was the same height that I am now. And not like super tall, but I was supposed to be taller than I am now. And I'm the same height as I was in seventh grade. And I wrestled 135 in eighth grade and 140 in my senior year of high school and then 142 in college. And yeah, looking back on it, I'm like, he gained five pounds in, you know, five years or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Your body's supposed to grow more than that. And we, you know, as a wrestler, we're like, no, you're supposed to get small. I wanted to ask you, when you were uh, at Nebraska, were you on the same team as Justin Ware? Do you remember him? No, he, so he was there a year before me. Okay. He he lasted the year before me. I think he was a true freshman and he, he only make it one year up there. Uh, I think he wrestled two years. I think he had a red shirt freshman year. Okay. 
So yeah, so the year that I went up there, he was not there anymore. He was there the year before. Okay. Um, but man, I you know I heard stories. You know I heard stories about how tough he was, and you know it. it he he made an impact on the short time he was there. Yeah. Know? Yeah, he was a ranked sixth in the country, and and as a redshirt freshman, and and was the only guy that had taken down Alan Freed that year. And then the reason I asked about him was because I just had his high school coach on, and we were talking about him a little bit. And he's like this, he's like this cool kind of a I don't know if it's a cool story for him especially, but he just he just quit. Like he got beat out at the national tournament, and no one ever saw him again, basically. So so I was just curious if you uh, if you knew him, but so you were also on the same sorry. Oh no! Go, go ahead. As I said, I heard, I heard good stories about him, man. I, he, you know, good stories. I just heard he, he didn't like the classwork. You know, they'd drop him off at class and he'd go in the front door and out the back door. Yeah. You know, they couldn't keep him in class, and he was there to wrestle. But yeah, he, he was he was a stud from everything I heard. Yeah, he was a freak. When we were kids, you know, I was telling somebody the other day that maybe it was his coach. I was like, he had good kids here, and then Justin Ware was here. You know, like. You'd have these good if you got within five points of Justin Ware, you had done something. You know, like it would it would be like going around at the state tournament, like, how did you hear Scott Murray only got beat by five points, you know? Because he just mauled everybody. Um so you were on the same team though with uh Timor. Uh how good is yeah. freaking Timor? Yeah, man, Timor Timor would piss me off. <laughs> Timor would get up and he just everything he did worked, you know. Like, he looked like he was a Greek god, but he didn't really lift weights. You know, he, he he would never really be out of shape, but maybe he didn't work as hard as everybody else. Now, he worked hard, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But just, he just, I'm like, God dang it, Timor. You know, you just got those genetics, and yeah, he's he's an awesome dude for one thing. I love Timor, and, and we had a lot of fun together, but just, he was a freak on the mat, man. He really was. And, and you know, I'd drill with him, and he, he you know, show me some stuff, and just little tricks. I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's slick, you know. Yeah. So my, my introduction to Timor, long, funny story, way back. I think it was one of my first or second years wrestling in Southern Plains, and I think there was nobody at my weight, maybe nobody his weight. I don't know why, but anyways, I, they bumped me up to wrestling, and I think he beat the crap out of me. And I'm like, who in the heck is this dude? <laughs> and that, that was my introduction to Timor, and that's probably why when I went up to Brass, I'm like, all right, man, if you can't beat him, join him. So I'm, I'm going to be on his team this time. Yeah. But he, he's a good dude. Yeah. He sure is. He sent, uh, we reconnected a couple of years ago and he, he sent some medical stuff to my mom and my sister and my wife and uh, just a super cool dude. And he's still that freak. He looks the exact same as he did when he was at Nebraska. He's got a like an eight pack and he's just yeah. cut to the teeth. And, and he was like that when we were 10 years old. He was just, he was always just a, a little freak. And he had that blast double from the time he was like 10 years old. And, he won Kid State when we were like 10, and we were at a tournament the next year, just warming up before the tournament, and he was like, I think I'm going to quit, and I was like, you can't quit, you're a state champion, you know, like, back then a state champion to me was just, you, you've already you've already reached the freaking, you know, zenith, you're, you're, you're the guy, so I give him shit about it, I'm like, you owe all your success to me, because I didn't let you quit. Yeah, absolutely, man, <laughs> he, absolutely, yeah, he he is. Uh, he was something else, man. He 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 was good. It was it was fun to watch him at, at the highest level and, and watch him compete. And I, it was I was lucky to be around him at that time. Probably cool to have him for a teammate, huh? It was. It was. And, and we were together outside the room all the time. He was always over our house hanging out, and, and we were we were pretty close up there. And uh, yeah, just watching him compete at the national tournament and. You know, all that stuff. And I, I watched a podcast with him, and, and he was talking about how they pulled him out of his red shirt year, and it kind of brought back some memories. I'm like, oh man, he was not happy about that situation at all. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it was funny. He didn't really get into that, but uh, um, as far as like how upset he was about it, but he was pissed about it. He he was because he just like he wanted to heal and and you know make a run at it. Um, I think the senior level, he was trying to get on the Olympic spot that time. And, um, he just made a mistake by going with us up to Northern Iowa and <laughs> had some success up there. And they're like, hey, by the way, you know, we need you. So um, yeah, that was that, you know. But if he would have never made that trip, I, I think they would have continued to let him take that red shirt. And who knows what happens, you know. But Yeah. Uh, he, he made one mistake, wanted to go hang out with us on that weekend trip up at <laughs> and I and Russell. Yeah. So and that's Timor, man. He could, he could not train for six months and jump on the mat and beat – 
you know, the top level guys. And it's like, good lord, man. Yeah. What's wrong with you? That's when he beat Joe Williams, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Was like, oof. That, what? Was, that was unbelievable. It was crazy. One of the all time. You know, he was out there with no care in the world. He was just up there having fun, hanging out. You know, he hadn't been, his body hadn't been through the grinder at that time because he was red shirting and he just went out and just wrestled, man. It was crazy. Yeah. When you say he pissed you off, was it because he made things look so easy? Yeah. Yes, he did. Like I said, he, I mean, his body, you know, he looks like a great guy. Um, he didn't lift hard. He didn't want to lift hard. He didn't have to lift hard. But he was strong and he looked like he looked, you know. And it's like, yeah. come on, man. And just just like beating Joe Williams, you know, just kind of, he was red shirt and he was working out, but he, he wasn't competing or anything. And he goes out there and beats Joe Williams. And it's like, yeah. dude, you know. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I love him, but yeah, he, he he definitely made things look easy. Yeah. Does uh, one guy in your in your whole career stand out as the toughest guy you've ever wrestled? Um, trying to, man, I've wrestled some tough ones. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I wrestled Jeff McGinnis at that same tournament up at U and I. Wrestled Jeff McGinnis. He, he was he was a hammer. Um, trying to think who else I've wrestled. But, you know, Dwight Henson. We had some good scraps. He was tough. But, I wrestled Scotty Murray a couple times. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he was fun. He was tough. Um, in college? I wrestled him in uh, high school and college, yeah. Okay. I wrestled him freestyle a couple times, and then I, I wrestled him in college. Um, I think that might have been my first or second college tournament when I was a true freshman. He was at UNI, and I think we wrestled at the Cyclone Open up at Iowa State. Um, who, yeah, he was tough. Uh, who won those yeah, matches? I think... <sighs> I know I, I beat him in high school once or twice. He might have beat me. Um, and then I beat him at the at the Cyclone Open, I think. Okay. He might have been All-American that year, too. He was, that was a free, he cut down to 118 that year, man. He was a monster at 118. Yeah. I think he wrestled 126 the year before you and I, and then he, he dropped to 118. Yeah. He was a big dude. Yeah. I, he, he, was a, he was a physical specimen, you know? But, yeah. I mean, honestly, Brett Williams is probably one of my toughest matches I've ever wrestled. Yeah. I mean, he, he was, Brett could have been as good as he wanted to be. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he was. I mean, he was on the world team and, you know, he, he was he was good, but yeah, he could have been as good as he wanted to be. Yeah. Him and Ricky both, right? Was uh, was Ricky just a freaking beast? Yeah, Ricky was, he, he was kind of one of those dudes whenever, you know, we were we were a little bit younger and he was in high school and, and so we always looked up to him because, you know, he, he was just whipping everybody and it was just that guy you're like. Good Lord, man, where'd this guy, you know, he, he made it look easy too. And, and he was that cool dude. And, you know, and, and I, I got the opportunity to be coached by him and, and be around him a lot because of Brett. So, you know, um, I got to know him more, but, but yeah, but before that, just watching him, you're like, man, this guy is ridiculous. You know, he just puts it on people and he's just slick and, you know, so it was fun to watch him and, uh, and then even watch Brett, you know, I think before me and Brett really were buddies, you know, just watching him and Micah beat up on these tournaments, I'm like, okay, who are these guys? You know, yeah. and then, uh, we kind of started wrestling together in the summertime and then hanging out and, and, you know, kind of when you wrestle in the summertime, you kind of start hanging out with, um, the top level wrestlers, right. You know, yeah. in the state and stuff. And, and even in the Midwest, I mean, all just kind of get to know each other. And so that's kind of how that, that happened. But, but yeah, those, those guys were fun to watch, man. Are you, uh, do you keep in contact with Micah Gardner at all? Um, you know, I, I would see him every once in a while. Um, I don't see him as much anymore. Um, now that I'm not coached in youth wrestling as much, he was coaching a team and then, and then I was coaching. So I'd run into him at tournaments and stuff. Um, but I, but I haven't seen him in a couple of years, uh, you know, but I think he's doing okay, you know, but, uh, kind of same thing, you know, we, we run into each other. It's like we haven't missed a beat, you know, I, I wasn't as close to him as I was Brett. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but Mike was around. Yeah. Is he, uh, did he wrestle in college? He did, I don't, he did not. I don't think he even went to college. You know, he kind of, um, he had some injuries in high school that, that held him back a little bit. You know, I think he was still a two-timer. Um, but I know his freshman year, freshman or junior year, one of them, he kind of got banged up a little bit, you know. And, and I remember even, uh, my first year wrestling Cadet National Michigan, he got injured up there. And, you know, he just didn't wrestle too much in the spring and summer after that injury. You know, but he was always so big and strong, and yeah, you know, he, he was just good. Yeah, he was a physical specimen as well. Yeah, yeah, he was. I remember, you know, when I, I just kind of remember wrestling him and just, just thinking like, okay, this dude's pretty strong. Yeah, you know, he's so long and strong. Yeah. Does yeah, any? Did, yeah, he, sorry. Yeah. 
No, I'm gonna say, yeah, I haven't seen him in a couple of years though. Yeah. Is he a, is he a monster now? Is, I, I I can't remember. It seems like I, somebody said he was huge, like a big dude now. Not really. Not really. No, he's pretty thin. And yeah, he. I can't. I'm trying to think. He might be a mortgage broker now or something. I can't remember what he's doing. But yeah, know, he, he, got, he had a couple kids, and uh, but you know he's coaching down in North North Kansas City a little bit. Um, had a club down there. Cool. Yeah, I remember his dad was kind of a stud too. You know, I'd, I'd see him at kids tournaments and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I remember and Ryan, his brother, was, was tough too, man. Okay. And Ryan was a little bit meaner than, than Mike, and Mike just kind of went out and took care of business. Ryan would like to beat you up a little bit more before he beat you. Yeah, yeah. yeah we wrestled a couple of times, and I do remember him being like a super nice kid, but then you get on the mat and he just, you know, he, yeah. he was a freaking he was a freaking yeah. stud. Does anything stand out as your, uh, you know, you've won a ton of matches, but does anything stand out as your favorite win ever or... Uh, Anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I beat some guys that, that I was proud of beating, you know, but I, you know, I probably went in, uh, you know, my first state title in high school was, was memorable. I uh, went in the last one, you know, being the first one to do it in a little while. Um, like you said, there's, seems like a lot of people do it nowadays. Um, but I think it's because wrestling as a whole has gotten so much better, at least in Missouri, you know, these guys that wrestle now in Missouri, they, they do wrestle in the spring and summer. So I think same type of mentality, they come back to the state tournament. It's not really that big of a deal for them. So they're, they're able to win four state titles, you know, those, those upper level guys. Um, so no, I, I think, uh, you know, probably my first state title, my last state title was, was memorable. Um, of course, you know, all my, my cadet finalist matches were pretty fun. You know, and then I, probably my, my most memorable tournament um, was one of my last tournaments. I, it was, uh, I think it was Espro Nationals. They don't have that anymore, but I was like the 19 and 20 age group nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think I went out to North Carolina with Nebraska. Um, I wrestled freestyle. I lost first round. I don't know who I was. I think I was wrestling up weight again, probably for me. But then came back and, and got third. Um, and then I, I brought that medal to my grandpa who was in the hospital and uh, he didn't make it long after that, but um, he was probably one of my biggest supporters. Yeah. You know, so that, that was kind of cool to, to do that for him at that time, you know? Yeah. So, and I, I that was a hammer of a bracket too. And, um, I can't remember who I, first round, I just wasn't in it. And I, you know, I just went out and I had to refocus. I said, hey man, let's, let's do this for him, you know, and, and got it done. And, and that's pretty cool. So did you say you lost in the first round and came all the way back and got third? Yeah, I did. Yeah, wow. I did. And I, I can't – and it is a guy that I'd probably wrestle before. I, and I have to go back and look at that bracket, but but I can't remember who it was. But I think I came back and I ended up beating Biff Wallizer for um, third, who, who was a guy that we kind of battled back and forth. You know, he might have beaten me at Cadet National one year. Um, so, you know, that, that, was, that was good. Um, so, I, you know, I got a lot of good memories in wrestling. You know, wrestling at the – World team trial was, was always fun, you know, looking at the guys I lost to up there, Clint Musser, who a couple time All American at, at PA and uh, I think Jason Davidson I lost in the finals of, of Greco at World Team Trials and he was, you know, a couple time All American in Minnesota and you know, just going back and looking at all the guys that I got the opportunity to wrestle and, and where they went, you know, and, and it was pretty cool, you know, knowing that you were able to compete with them and, and you know, a lot of memories. So backtrack, yeah. backtracking a little bit. Did you um, did you end up wrestling at Missouri for a while too? So I went down there, um, and, I, and I, I was on the team. Um, and again, I think at that point I just didn't have it. You know, I just mentally wasn't there. Um, I went down there, and I actually Brett was uh, wrestling at Wentworth. Ricky was coaching, and we kind of all were living together. Um, and I was down at MU, and uh, Sammy Henson actually was there this time. Uh, you know, so I was working out with Sammy a little bit, and uh, again, I was trying to get down to 118. Um, I wanted to wrestle 126, and they had Donnie Mitchell in the lineup at that time, and, and I understood it. He was a guy. He was there before me, um, but then he, had, he ended up getting hurt, I think, towards the end of the year, but I had already um, decided I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think I, I wrestled a semester down there, and I was like, you know what, man, I'm, I just I don't want to do it anymore, you know? Yeah. Uh, Probably the wrong move, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So, and then I ended up finishing school down there and graduating. Yeah. But, you know, I probably could have taken another pass. I, you know, I was talking to me and Rick were talking the other day, and it's like, man, you know, Dennis Hall was kind of that first guy that, that left college and went to the OTC, you know, and I'm like, 
would have been perfect for me. You know, I could have went out there and wrestled Greco and, you know, it just, it just wasn't as, you know, without the social media and all that, you, you just didn't think about that type of stuff anymore, you know, and they didn't have a lot of resident athletes out there. It just wasn't like it was today, but, you know, I felt like, like I said, a couple different paths, maybe my career could have been different, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I enjoyed it and, and I have a lot of good memories and, you know, and yeah. I hopefully can pass that on to, to the kids I coach. And and how many of your own kids do you have? So I, I got three kids. Um, okay. I got one boy and, and two girls. So uh, my son, he, he wrestled all the way through. And uh, this year he's not wrestling his senior year. He's focusing on baseball. Um, he's, a, he's a lefty, and he's going to pitch for Washburn University next year. Awesome. So he decided uh, this, this winter that he wanted to focus on, on baseball and get bigger and stronger so he could, uh, you know, be ready to compete next fall. Cool. What's yeah, so I'm glad they took his own path. You know, it's, it's hard as a, as a dad and as a, a wrestling guy, you know, because he, he's super talented. I mean, he can be as good as he wanted to in wrestling, but he's just, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to choose that path either. You know, he wanted, he wanted to carve his own path, and he's done a great job. It's been fun watching him. Yeah. My son's only two, but it seems like that's what, you know, good parents do. They let their kids choose their own path, even if it's kind of hard for them to be like, you know, because, you, like you said, you love wrestling, but... Um, what, what do you say is the best part of being a dad? Um, you know, just, just having that unconditional love for your, from your kids, you know, I mean, no matter what you do, they still love you, right? Um, you, you can't ever screw up in their mind. So, so that's awesome, man. And, and just, you know, seeing their smiles every day and, uh, seeing, seeing how they succeed, you know, and, um, I mean, it's just a, a cool experience, you know, and, uh, being able to, to give them things that they want and, you know, helping them out when they need it. Yeah. My boy fell last night. We were wrestling on the bed and he fell off and, uh, you know, he gets all crazy and he fell off and hit his head and, I mean, hit his head hard and it scared the hell out of me, dude. Like, we, we took him all the way to the emergency room before I was like, you know, I think he's fine, you know, like, but I was the one freaking out. My wife was like, well, let's just watch him. I'm like, no, <laughs> took him now. Like, I thought his head was, I thought his skull was caked because the way he was crying, it looked like it was mashed in or something. But, <laughs> you know, and then he was fine. But um, we got all the way there before I was like, all right, I think he's probably, you know, we checked his eyes and all that other stuff. And, yeah. And, and he's fine. We, we've had a, we've had some good bedroom wrestling matches, me and my son. So I'm sure you'll have a lot of those growing up. And yeah. I had a pretty understanding wife who, she never, it never bothered her when he did his head either. So, you know, <laughs> you, you sound like you got a good wife there. That she's like, yeah, I'll get over it. Yeah. Just brush it off a little bit. Yeah, she was, uh, she was a world class uh, badminton player in her own right. She played on world teams and all that shit. So she's, oh. she's, uh, she's pretty cool. I told the story to Barry Davis. We went to the world, world tournament in Vegas, and my wife is really laid back and and shy and kind of quiet, and for the most part. And Helen Marillis was wrestling in the gold medal match, and at one point my wife stood up and she and she needed a, she needed two more points to get the tech fall, and my wife stood up and she goes, "Finish her, Helen." <laughs> and, awesome. Yeah, I, I think at that point I knew I was going to marry her. And my my dog is freaking out in there. Um, I, can you hear my dog? I got him. Yeah. Dude, that's all right. I got mine. Mine are down and probably barking too. She's losing her mind. I think the male guy's out there who she can't wrap her head around the fact that he comes every freaking day. Mm-hmm. Um, I will keep you on here all day, but I, I did want to ask how uh, um, how Battle Gear came to fruition. Yeah, so um, kind of funny story. So one of my really good friends for a long time uh, owned Blue Chip with Gums, right? Jason Heslop. Okay, um, and. So I, they would always get our apparel for our club, and, and me and Jason started Mo West together, and, and we started that in 2 and it's still going today. Um, but I just, I, I kind of got into it at another time um, with the apparel business. I, I kind of uh, tried it out. Uh, what happened with me and my dad, our business got bought out, so I didn't know what I was going to do. And I talked to Jason, he's like, oh, you know, once you, uh, you know, contract some apparel through us, and you know, we'll print it for you and, and you can sell it. And I said, okay. And I, and I tried it, but I told him I'd stay out of wrestling because, you know, they're a big wrestling company. I didn't want to really step on their toes. Um, so I kind of started selling to some swimming clubs and some, some other people. And I'm like, you know, that's all my contacts were wrestling, you know. So just, I was struggling a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. So I got out of it. And then, uh, and I was still running the club and, and trying to find some singlets and, 
um, blue chip was busy. And so I kind of started um, researching and, and found some uh, manufacturers to, to create some of our own stuff. And I was kind of on my own and just doing it for my club. And then some people found out and, and reached out and wanted to know if I would help them out with their club. And kind of one thing led to another. And, and I was kind of doing it as a side hustle. And then uh, kind of funny, I was, Rick called me up and he goes, hey, man, you know, are you able to do these sublimated referee shirts? He's like, we're doing a memorial for, for Dave, you know, when Dave passed away. And, and all these uh, officials were going to wear them. And he's like, you know, the company I'm working for, they just can't get them done fast enough. I'm like, hey, let me check it out. And I was able to get them in for him in, in you know, less than a couple weeks. And he's like, man, that's awesome. And uh, we, and that was kind of the first time that me and Rick had interacted with, with apparel, you know. But he was he had his own deal going, and I was kind of – I wasn't doing it full time, um, but I was learning, you know, learning on the manufacturer side of it. And uh, we just kind of collaborated on a couple other jobs here and there. And then, you know, I think we just started talking like, man, why don't we just do this together? You know, because he, he was having trouble with his the guy he was working for and, and not really treating him the best. And um, so we just kind of we joined forces. And, and, and back when we started, it was called Angry Fish. Um, Angry okay. Fish Designs. And uh, we just kind of wanted to start fresh, you know, with, with us too. So, um, you know, I think I was at some softball games with my daughter or my son baseball game. And, I just kept hearing this coach say, battle out there, battle out there. You know, I'm like, battle. I'm like, yes, battle. That's what we're always battling, you know. And I'm like, all right, let's let's try battle gear, you know. So it kind of stuck. And, and, and you know, we, we joined forces uh, about three years ago. And, and here we are, you know. Yeah. So it's been fun. It's been fun. And, you know, it's been fun working with Rick because, uh, you know, Rick's real detail-oriented on some stuff where maybe I'm not. So, you know, we kind of balance each other out, you know. And so it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like a, a, just a salt of the earth person. And I, I really enjoyed our podcast that I had with him and, and, yeah. uh, you know, tough as nails. And I always knew who he was, but I had never, you know, met him. That's what's, that's what is cool about Facebook. There's a lot wrong with it, but there's a lot of things, you know, like I've been able to, con- you know, uh, get hooked up with all these different wrestlers. And, you know, some of them I just had admired from afar and didn't really know who they were, but, you know, um, yeah. you know, wrestling's wrestling and, and it's, it's, it's funny. You get older and you, you talk about things and you're like, you know, I thought you were this way or that way. And then you meet them and they're just basically like you. And, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is crazy. How you, I mean, I've, I've done that with people. I'm like, oh, this guy's such a jerk, you know? And then I'm around <laughs> and I'm like, hey man, this guy's really cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You just don't know. And especially with wrestling, man, guys are just so down to earth and willing to give you their time and, and hang out and talk. And it's, it's a really good sport for that. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'll ask you, and I don't know if you mind talking about it or not, but I read your story about um, when you met your biological parents. Um, do you mind talking about that? Like, how cool was that to for that to happen? Well, so that that, that wasn't me. Um, oh, that wasn't so, you? Nope. So what happened, how about this? And this was, it was pretty cool. So was a, about a year ago... Um, my mom called me up. She goes, hey, I, I got something to talk to you about. You need to come over here. And I'm like, okay. I said, is everything okay? You know, it's like, yeah, it's fine. And, you know, I just need to talk to you. So um, go to her house and uh, she says, hey, she sits us all down. And, and my sister's there and she goes, hey, I just want you to let you know that when we were young, her and my dad, she's like, we had a kid that we gave up for adoption. Oh, Okay. So, it, it, yeah, they, they gave it up, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. And my, and my sister, of course, goes, well, I, I kind of knew that already. I'm like, well, how did you know that y'all didn't tell me, you know? So, um, but, yeah, long story short is when they were – my mom had just graduated high school. My dad was still in high school. Uh, you know, they had an accident, and um, they were going to get married. Well, at that time, my dad needed his father – to sign the marriage certificate to get married. And the day before the wedding, he goes, not doing it. <laughs> you know, so um, my mom being single at that time, she's like, you know, the best opportunity for this kid to be successful is to get him up. Um, so she did that. And at that time, you signed all the papers that you wouldn't go looking for the kid and all that, right? Right. Um, so my co- one of my cousins had turn in one of the DNA tests. I don't know which one, but turn in the DNA test. And Eric, who is our older brother, um, reached out to her and, she, and he said, hey, I think we're cousins. <laughs> so um, 
they got talking and, and my cousin reached out to my mom and said, Hey, I, I think your son is trying to reach out to you. You know, what do you want me to do? Okay. And, uh, and that's when my mom talked to us first and said, you know, what do you think? And we're like, yeah, you know, I wish you would have told me about this 10 years ago, 20, you know, like for you to have to have that burden to hold on that secret this long, yeah. you know, for no reason. Um, and so they started talking and, and reaching out and, and one thing led to another and, and we met him and very cool guy, you know, um, he, he grew up in St. Joe, Missouri, with, and he was adopted, um, of course, but he also had his, well, I think one of his parents were adopted, and a couple of his other siblings were adopted, so, um, but he grew up in a, in a great situation, um, and probably a better situation that maybe he could have with us at the time, you know, who knows. Yeah. Um, but my parents ended up getting married, so, it, you know, most of the time when you search out your biological parents, like, you know, they're probably not together anymore. Um, but this happened, they happened to be together and, and he was able to come up and meet us and, and, uh, no, he's a really good dude and, uh, he's got a great wife and, and kids and it was really cool. Yeah. So like, I just wish it would have happened uh, you know, a long time ago. Yeah. Um, knowing that he had a brother, but, uh, you didn't know. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and, and if you look at us, you know, we're, we look real similar. Yeah. You know, so, so no, it's, it's a cool story and, and I'm glad that, um, my mom, got that opportunity because I think, you know, she's always carried that burden with her of, you know, is he okay? Did I make the right move? You know, so. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Did he, did he wrestle? He did not, man. I, he grew up playing baseball and hockey. He was okay. a hockey player. Okay. So, yeah, he, he played a lot of hockey growing up and um, they're in Alabama now. I think they moved down there so his wife could go to nursing school and finish up and they just, I think it was supposed to be a temporary move, and they ended up being—they've been down there for ten or fifteen years, you know. So we're all like, "Hey, come back up here now!" That you know. Yeah. Um, and he, he's still got a lot of family around this area and stuff, but uh, I think his wife's family is mostly in that Alabama area. So who knows if they'll ever make the trek back up here? But yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. Cool. You know, you just—you never know how that's going to end up on both ends. You know, if the if the uh, the kid's going to be okay, and if the parents are going to be—you know—you just never know. But it, it worked out to where. You know, great. He's great, and, and my parents, you know, awesome, and it all worked out. And, and his his um, ad- parents that adopted him were were very cool about. You know, they met my parents, and just all it's a, it's a really cool story. Yeah, it's a great story. I I, I love it. Um, where can people find uh, a Battle Gear Apparel? Oh, uh, so right now, it's, you know, we, we have our website uh, battlegearusa.com. Um, we're in the middle of revamping a little bit. Um, so we, we don't just sell a lot of one-off stuff, you know, retail, it's, it's more custom orders. Um, a lot of apparel, uh, or I'm sorry, a lot of uniforms, um, a lot of coaches apparel, stuff like that. We do a lot of online stores, um, for schools and organizations to where they can buy spirit wear and stuff like that. Um, we're trying to get to the point to where we are selling, uh, more online to individual, just one-offs and stuff like that. Um, we've created our own cotton fleece line that, I'll put it up to anybody. It's super comfortable, uh, durable. So we'd like to sell that online. You know, people can go there and buy a pair of sweats or a hoodie or crew neck. Um, but that's that's where we're working towards. So we're not quite there yet, you know. But uh, any teams that want uniform singlets, uh, basketball, football, baseball, you know, we're here. Cool. So what we try to do is, is we try to give them a little bit better pricing because we don't have quite the overhead um, without sacrificing the, the quality and the um, design. You yeah. Know. Well, Rick sent me this hat and another hat that my, you know, um, my wife wears all the time now and she looks yeah. great in it and, and the hoodies and it's really good stuff. And I wear this, I'm trying to grow my hair out. So I wear this hat like every freaking day. Um, that was awesome. yeah. So I, uh, I, I do what I can for you guys as far as that goes. And I really appreciate you sending them and, and I can't tell you how cool it was to, to finally meet you and talk to you this way. And, and I hope that I run into you someday and, and we can, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, let me know when you're up here. I mean, I know you're in California right now, right? Yeah. Are you going to go to Yeah. Uh, hey, get back this way, man. Let me know. I will. Or if we travel, you know, which we, usually when it's not a pandemic, we're traveling for wrestling to Las Vegas and, and all over the place, man. So, so if we're ever in your neck of the woods and we'll come out and see you or catch you at some stand-up comedy when you're doing that again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been doing it way less this year than I, I have in previous years, but yeah. it's... Are you it, able to do any of it? Uh, yeah, I just did Vegas, and I'm actually supposed to be in Kansas City coming up, um, and I, I've done maybe six weeks this entire year, whereas, 
you know, I've been on stage maybe 20 times, whereas I would normally be on stage around 300 times in a year. Yeah. So it, it's been a little, it's been a little weird, but. Yeah. Hey, so where are you going to come in Kansas City? What, where do you go to perform? Uh, it'll be the Comedy Club of Kansas City. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's close to state line, I believe. Yeah. But I I'll, so. I'll let you guys know when the, what the, when the dates are going to be. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Me and Rick will come out and bring our wives and introduce you and hang out for a while. That'll be awesome. Cool, buddy. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, and uh, I'll let you know when it's up. It'll probably be next Wednesday, and, uh, you know, you can share it and all that stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah, no, man, that's awesome. I appreciate the opportunity and love talking wrestling, so anytime. Cool, man. Do you, get, do you watch it a lot now? Do I what? Do you watch a lot of wrestling? I do. You know, I'm coaching right now, so I, I coach a lot. I... You know, for me, to be honest with you, man, watching, like, NCAA, like, just, it hurts me. I just got a middle block because, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have the success I wanted to. And so, I just, it's very hard for me to watch, like, the NCAAs and college wrestling. Um, I watch the international and the senior stuff a little bit more. Um, but I just can't get over that. Yeah. That middle, you know, I just can't do it. It's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. No, I... I, I, I could, um, you know, but... I, I, like, hey, man, let's go watch NCAA. Let's go watch NCAA. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm good. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't no, know. I, I get it. We've all we've all got, uh, I think we've all got a little bit of that, you know, because, yeah. like you said, you get older and you realize, like, well, shit, I could have done X, Y, Z. And, like, my sophomore year of high school, all I had to do was go and talk to my coach. Or that's when it would have been, you know, if my dad would have been a little bit different, you know, like just to go talk to the coach and be like, he's killing himself, you know, like... Yeah. There's no reason for him to be doing this, but yeah. I ended up just not even wrestling yeah, at all that year. It's like I look at guys like Chris Bono, who are much taller than me, you know, and he wrestled, what, 145 or 142? I'm like, why was I killing myself? Why? Yeah. These guys weren't much bigger than me, and if I would have lifted, I could have been right there. And, yeah. You know, so I think I just kind of disappointed myself and just how all that went down. But, you know, like I said, it, a lot of it was probably my fault and just being immature and, you know. Talking yeah. my tail running instead of staying there and sticking it out. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you were a freaking beast, man, and I'll never, for, <laughs> I'll never forget, uh, I'll never forget the mystique of Matt and Franca, and and uh, you, you were a freaking stud, man, and and it was really cool to, it's really cool to connect with you, and, and uh, yeah. you know, kind of know you now as a person a little bit, and so. I will keep... Do you keep up with Scott Trimble at all? Um, yeah. we're we're friends on Facebook with you. Yeah, we're friends on Facebook. Um, we don't we don't necessarily agree on a lot of things going on right now. <laughs> he, he jumps on he jumps on my stuff too a little bit, and I'm like, so I think me and you me and you are on the same page. He's he's not, but yeah. I don't know if you if you were on there. I figured you saw some of the stuff. Yeah, he uh, he pops up and gives me shit about you know some of the <laughs> things I believe and and uh, yeah. you know whatever. We're all entitled to our opinions, but um, oh, yeah. so what high school did you go to? I went to Shawnee Mission West. Oh, you're at West, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I could—I thought you were at Payola for a minute. For some, I thought I heard that, and I don't know why. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was the same area. You know, not you know, maybe twenty, thirty minutes away. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I, I had a, I had kind of a weird. You know, I wrestled some, from the time I was seven all the way through high school, and well, my freshman year, I I, I made varsity at one thirty, and I had a pretty good record, and then I broke my hand and. And the coach, without getting into all of it, my brother was really freaking good, but he was always ineligible. So by the time I got to high school, the coach was like another Gaither, you know, and right from the start, he was like, he was just super hard on me in a way that I couldn't understand. And then I was like eight and four, and I probably hadn't lost four matches in my last three years of kids. So being eight and four, I was like, I suck. I'm a loser. You know, like what is wrong with me? But, you know, looking back on it, I was just, uh, I was wrestling grown men, and I was only 14, you know, they're like, you know, these guys had hair on their chest, and, you know, 130 was a pretty tough weight, and then my sophomore year, I cut all that weight, ended up quitting, and then my junior year, I placed, and then my senior year, I went undefeated, so it worked out, you know, in a way, but I have the same kind of regrets, like, you know, on a high school level, like, looking back on it, like, how much better could I have done, and then I wrestled a couple years in junior college, and my heart was never really in it, you know, um, yeah. and college is so freaking hard. If your heart's not in it, you're not gonna, you know. Yeah, it's brutal, man. Yeah. Dude, it's tough. It just, yeah. everything's, a, you know, it seems like it's a dog fight and just, you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. But 
I made some great friends and, you know, everything is, you know, like, like we said, everything works out for a reason and you look back on it and you're like, well, would you change anything as far as your kids or anything? And the answer for that is always no. So, you know, yeah. So I, I, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's tough, man. It, when we look back like that, God dang it, man. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I understand the regrets, but you're one of the best uh, in Missouri history, and and it's uh, you know one of the one of the first few four timers and all that stuff, and so it's super cool to you know I remember reading the the reading about you in the the Kansas City Star. That was the only thing you could see back then, and just being like, man, this guy's a four time state champ, you know, like. So anyway. Super cool. I should talk tell to you about uh, the kid from who I wrestled somebody at that Missouri Kansas All Star book. Like, can they maybe name Ocho or what's his name? Sabino Ochoa. That was him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, I think he was running his mouth like the whole time before that match. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't social media, but he was just he was talking, and I think I went out there and just I was on a mission to beat the shit out of him because he was running his mouth. <laughs> you know, so I I think was he a Paola kid? He was from uh, Harmon, I believe. Maybe Harmon, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was supposed to wrestle Kyle Patch, and I think he went down a way or something. Oh, okay. But we ran up the Kansas City Stars funny because I remember him chirping away. And I'm just like, but yeah, that's all we had back then was a star, man. We didn't. Yeah. It was hard for guys to communicate and, and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my, you know, I, I think about that, like the way my high school career played out and how. You know, my senior year, I was able to put it all together and whatever, because I really only had that, you know, my junior year, I was just knocking the rust back off, and I ended up having a good year, but my, my senior year, you know, I went undefeated, and I can't imagine being in the situation that some of these kids are. Like, some of these kids aren't even getting to have a senior year, and my heart just breaks for them, you know, because without getting into all the COVID stuff, you look at the website, and you're like, well, this isn't really affecting kids. Why don't we just protect the vulnerable and... So yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, man. You be glad you don't have a senior right now because it's it's tough watching him go through it. I bet You're not really getting to enjoy the senior stuff. The you know just going to the football game with everybody and uh, yeah, you know, cheering on his buddies and uh, doing the dances and just you know even like they couldn't do a school signing for him because you know COVID. And I'm like, we can't bring these guys in and do a signing, and, but you know just just everything, you know. So yeah. And, I'm hoping that he gets his senior baseball season, which I think he will, but, you know, he missed last year, and it's been rough. It's been rough having a senior in uh, any age group, but, you know, especially for him, because I'm like, you know, this is it for him. You know, it's supposed to be a big, fun year, and, yeah, you know, he doesn't really get to enjoy it and be around anybody. Yeah. Well, so, I hope it works out for him, and, uh, yeah. and and when does baseball season start? So here it starts in March. They'll okay. have tryouts, like, the 1st of March, and then... Uh, they'll start playing probably the middle of March, actually. But I'll tell you what, wrestling just got extended here till I think state's going to be March 9th, the week of March 9th. Okay. Um, so it's going to cut into some spring sports. I don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah. It won't affect my son, but, you know, some kids that I coach, I got some baseball players and track guys, that it's going to affect them a little bit for tryouts. Yeah, my buddy coaches in Derby, Kansas, and they're not going to, they, they're, they're wrestling, but they, like, have no audience and all that, and, yeah, you know that was part of the fun of it, you know. Yeah, no, it, that's what I mean. It's just no, it's just not a good experience for these kids right now. I mean, yeah, you know that's the fun when all the kids are there cheering you on from your school, and you know the gyms are getting rowdy, and you know now it's just quiet in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it's like a, it's almost like a, like a freestyle tournament or something, you know? Like you yeah, can hear the shoes yeah. squeaking and all that other stuff. <laughs> Which actually, for my kid, that's better because that, you know, that, the loud gyms, especially at Utah, that just gave him anxiety. You know. Yeah. So like then we'd take him out to Las Vegas and wrestle, and it was quiet, and he smashed people out there. I'm like, what is wrong with you? you know, like, <laughs> that loud noise and stuff, man. He could, he could not deal with that. So yeah, it yeah. It would have been a good situation for him. <laughs> yeah, wrestling is so mental, dude. It's uh, you yeah. know, it, it's crazy. Um, the things that I wish that, that I would have known, you know, and the, you know, now that I have a son, and if he wants to wrestle, I feel like technique was never my like strong suit as far as teaching it, but um. I, I was I was good at the mental aspect of it as far as like calming people down and that kind of thing. So, you know, and, and not you know when I was a kid, I thought that like the state tournament was the, you know, the end of the world and the end all and be all. And if you didn't win it, you know, like it was a year before you could, you know. And looking yeah. back on it, I'm like, you were just a kid. Like, why did you put so much pressure on yourself? But anyway, crazy. yeah, it sure yeah, is. Yeah, just, 
the being able to calm somebody down will probably go a long way with your son. So yeah, it's good that you have that because I it was hard for me because I never really got nervous or you know it just didn't get to me like it did. Like my son would be puking on Tuesday and he wrestled Saturday, and I'm like. <laughs> I didn't deal with this. I don't know how to deal with it. You know, I'm like, get over it. You know, and it, it was very hard for me to deal with that part of it. So with you, you'll probably be a big benefit for your son. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been doing comedy for a living for almost 20 years. And sometimes I get so nervous. You'd think I would, ne- I had never been on stage in my life. So, <laughs> right. you know, and, and I was always that way in wrestling. I would throw up before almost every tournament when I was a kid, <laughs> it, except for the important tournaments. Like, like sub district, district and state, I'd be fine, and and I'm that way now. Like the bigger the situation, the less nervous I get, which is, I don't know what that's about, but you know, it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird thing, nerves and all that crap. So I get yeah, it. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, hopefully uh, we can get out to Vegas when you're out there one time too. I have to kind of watch and see when you're out there. Me and my wife used to go out there all the time before the pandemic, and we go out there to wrestle a couple times a year. So we love Vegas. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hope, hopefully the next time I go back, hopefully it'll be better. This time there was, they were only allowed to have 25% capacity and it was like a big horseshoe. You had to be 25 feet away from the audience and people were all masked up and it was just, it was just weird. You know, and six of the eight shows were good. One of them was bad and one of them was just awful, you know, because <laughs> it was just, you know, when they're not laughing and they're like this big horseshoe and you can't even see the audience really. It was just, yeah. it was brutal. Um, I was going to say, is it, is it tough for you to put on a show for that? I'm, I'm sure it is. You know, when the crowd was laughing, it was it was great. But like yeah. I said, those two shows where they weren't really, you know, they just, whatever. Um, it. It, it was brutal. Um, right. You know, it was like being in a, I can't even describe, it was almost like some kind of satanic ritual, you know. You could see all these people way away from you and they're masked up yeah. and they're just kind of like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, that's crazy man yeah this is strange strange time right now yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i i hate the mask i hate i hate that you can't see people's facial expressions anymore and it, yeah. i always feel like people are pissed off at me and right. <laughs> you know I'm like, I'm like, you know so when you look when you see people match like okay is this is this them trying to make everybody equal right because you can't see expression can't all you can see his eyes so it's like we all look the same now we all, it's just uh, very strange to me, the mask, uh, and I, I don't like them. Yeah, and and the what's strange too are all the people like running around my neighborhood by themselves, jogging or riding bikes by themselves with a mask, and I'm like, you know, I get it, yeah, I guess. You know but what are you what are you worried about? I just want to go. Yeah. What are you scared of? Why are you in your car with your windows up and a mask on? Like, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, so, hey, are you guys on lockdown down there? What what do you where what are you guys doing? Well. uh California was trying to shut, they were trying to shut down parks and everything else. Um, yeah, and, and recently they, some judge finally got some sense about them and decided that we could have church and we could have, um, we, the parks could open up and all that stuff. And uh, so it's gotten a little easier, but they're still not letting people in restaurants and, and they're close, you know, that's the thing that drives me crazy. I'm like, how come Costco and Walmart and Target can be open, but all these small businesses are being shut down? Like, you don't think they have the brains to to do the things that 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 these guys that work at Walmart are doing? You know, um, right. so there's just like Dennis Hall said, he's like, it bothers me that more people don't have questions. You know, that some people are just blindly following all this and. You know, if you get into the conspiracy of it, or you want to call it a conspiracy, some of that stuff is starting to make a lot more sense to me than than this other crap, you know. And I, I don't I know, man. To, I try not to buy into that, but then you start, you're like, is there a little bit here? You know, is there yeah. something here? Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I try not to, because I, I try to believe that everybody is doing the right thing, or out for the good reason, you know, but then it's like, well, hold on here, you know, so. Yeah. Well, that's also what they count on is that all the good people in this country that don't think that other people would do that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, like somebody said, if you're not a psychopath, you can't think like one, you know. So, so it's, you know, true, makes that's it hard. Crazy. Well, hopefully it'll start getting back to normal, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you some. Uh, I'll send you some links of stuff you can check out, and and it'll uh, it'll either <laughs> it'll either give you peace or drive you crazy. One of the two. I know Rick's sending me some stuff too. I'm like, Rick, quit sending me those because I'm getting, I'm going crazy now. 
Let me, let me be blind a little bit. But, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, send it out. I'll take a look at it. All right, buddy. Well, God bless you. I'll uh, let you know when this yeah. is up, and thanks so much for taking the time. All right, man. Have a good Christmas. Thanks, Matt. You too, buddy. All right, everybody. Matt and Franca, uh, super cool dude. That was a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Uh, as always, go to makingithappen.com, M-A-C-A-N-ithappen.com. Help out little Bo Macon. And uh, my YouTube is youtube.com slash Tim Gaither. And I've got some podcasts that I've been ta- I've been talking to a couple people that it's not wrestling, uh, but it's there's a guy who has some really interesting takes on on what is going on in our country and in our world. And I'll let you guys know, uh, you know, when those are up. But this is a wrestling podcast, so let's, uh, you know, I'll try to stay focused on that. But anyway, it was great having Matt and Franca on. And make sure you check out BattleGearUSA.com and, uh, you know, buy their products. They're really quality, and I love these hats. And uh, anyway, great to talk to a Missouri legend. And I think that's it. God bless all of you. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Do us both a favor and click on that subscribe button.